with dance began quite early. Whether it was tapping my feet to Bollywood music or swaying to the tunes of Hannah Montana, it was a movement of joy. It wasn't until the summer of 2008 when my parents took me to my first Bharatanatyam class. I didn't know much about the art form, and at the age of six, not much was of interest to me. But my parents urged me to give it a try. The moment I entered that small, dingy classroom at Pierce College, I felt an instant connection, this unexplainable feeling. I'm not sure whether it was the little girls who looked just like me, or the radiant smile that greeted us as we entered. That smiling face was none other than my amazing guru, Vijay Prakash, or better known to me as Vijayanti my greatest inspiration. Initially, I was drawn to the exquisite costume, elaborate jewelry, and beautiful makeup, transforming myself into this Indian fairy tale princess. I mean, who wouldn't want that? I was sold. And thus, my journey through dance began. Bharatanatyam is considered one of the oldest expressions of dance originating in South India sometime around 200 BC. Some of the components include nritta, the sophisticated footwork, such as tiritte, tiritte, ta, jum, tiritte, ta, jum, tiritte, ta, ta, jum. Nritya, the vivid facial expressions, such as anger, sorrow, or joy. And natya, theatrics or storytelling through the use of hand gestures such as people, a flower, eyes, a river, or a peacock, and many more. As well as ragams, the melody, and thalam, the beat. Through these components, I was able to express myself in a way that I could not with words. Bharatanatyam also takes inspiration from poetry and music in multiple Indian languages, as well as from the sculptures and scriptures of Hindu mythology. Being of Indian origin and being raised in a different culture was often conflicting, and I needed answers and explanations that made sense. The names of Ganesha, 
Krishna, Shiva, were mere names of a god. But Bharatanatyam taught me that Ganesha was the elephant-faced god and remover of obstacles. Krishna was the one who would steal butter and tease the gopis. And Shiva was the lord of cosmic dance who resonated in the whole world. I was able to relate with my religion and my culture. But in this day and age, we often get caught in the stress of daily life. Being the perfectionist that I am, I tend to lack confidence at times. And when I felt myself crumbling under the pressure, Bharatanatyam provided me with the opportunity to immerse myself for a few hours each day and forget about anything else. In August of 2017, I had the privilege of performing my Arangetram, or solo dance debut, in which I performed in front of a large audience for about two and a half hours. Months of training, rehearsals, private classes with my teacher, and little to no social life enabled me to connect with myself. It was such an incredible journey and humbling experience that instilled rigorous mental and physical discipline. On that day, the dancer from within me had emerged, and I felt complete. Bharatanatyam allowed me to connect with my mind and my body, learn more about my lineage, and make friends that would be with me for years to come. Likewise, it could be any activity. It could be pursuing music, a sport, theater, anything that you're passionate about. There's a saying, dance is everywhere in the universe, from the stately waltz of the stars to the majestic swirl of the galaxies. It's all one master equation. For me, Bharatanatyam was that equation. So what's yours? My final performance about the powerful female goddess Shakti is dedicated to all the women in the audience in honor of Women's History Month. Thank you. Thank you. 